Hey, and welcome back to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. Pastor Mike here at Valley Christian Fellowship. Thanks for joining me today as we are in the final chapters of Luke's Gospel. Now, these final chapters, these are the the chapters that are full of heartbreak and as we see Jesus' arrest after his betrayal, we see Jesus' crucifixion. And then ultimately, these are the chapters that are full of hope as we see his resurrection. And today we are in Luke chapter 22, which this chapter has the the plot to betray Jesus. This chapter has the the upper room with Jesus and his disciples as they they share the last meal together as Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper and what we do in remembrance of him when we take the cup and when we take the bread. But uh, but it also includes, uh, well, later it's going to include Jesus' actual arrest and him beginning to appear before councils. But, but what I want to focus on today is this exchange between Jesus and Peter that I find to be uh, incredibly encouraging and thought-provoking and challenging and, and even heartbreaking as I look at my own heart and my, look at my own uh, faithlessness at times. And so this, this chapter, chapter 22, the text we're going to look at, why don't we turn here with me? Let me show you what it is. It's going to be chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. Jesus here is speaking to Peter. They had just had a conversation about the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And now here is what Jesus says to one of his disciples, Peter, to, to one of his best friends. Here, here's what he says. He says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. These are Jesus's words. Jesus is speaking to Peter. He, he, here, look, look at what's happening here. There is an insight, first of all, into the realm of spiritual warfare and this dynamic where Satan wants Peter, yeah, he doesn't just want Peter. <clears throat> the, the text actually here, Jesus begins, he says that Satan has demanded to have you, plural, speaking to all of his disciples. But then he says, I have prayed for you, singular, Peter, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Now, right after this, Jesus predicts that Peter's going to deny him before the rooster crows three times. And so there's, there's so much... Uh, tension built in this story right here. But but look at this dynamic, this dynamic of spiritual warfare where Satan is demanding Peter. He, he's demanding the disciples. And we need to remember that, that his demand is fair. Uh, Satan's demand for you and I, his demand is a demand that says, look at, look at Mike or look at the listener right now. Look at their fa- failure. Look at their faithlessness. Look at the sin that is in their life. Every one of us, we uh, we stand accused before Satan. And, and he he has a legitimate demand upon us. But, but here, this is what Jesus says. He says, but I have prayed for you. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Now, not that your faithfulness may not fail because Peter, he, he's going to fail. He's going to deny Jesus three times. Boom, boom, boom. Three times that night, he is going to deny uh, his allegiance, his affiliation, his friendship with Christ. But but Jesus prays for Peter that his faith may not fa- fail, that ultimately that he would have faith that trusts in the, in the death and then the resurrection of Christ in the substitution of Jesus for his sins. And this is the same for you and I. We have a faith, not in our ability, not in our moral high standing, not in anything that we have done or can do, but we have a faith in Christ. And so Christ says, he says, but I have prayed for you. Satan wants to sift you. He wants to, he wants to reveal the, the, the failure in your life, but I have prayed for you. He says, and when you've returned, when you've turned again, strengthen your brothers. You know, that, uh, that old Bon Jovi song, uh, not my generation, but my dad's generation, living on a prayer. This passage makes me think about that. Not so much the, the story of the song about working on the docks and the union on strike and it being really tough. <laughs> Some of you <laughs> let the listener understand. But, uh, but what it actually makes me think about is how you and I, we, we, we really do, we live on, on Christ, on his prayer. We don't just live on Jesus and his finished work and his death and resurrection. But do you realize that Jesus right now, he lives to make intercession for you and I. 
Right now, he is by the Father's side. He is interceding. He is pleading on our behalf for what is best for us to the Heavenly Father. And he knows what's best for us. He's praying for us right now. This is amazing. Uh, we, we see Jesus pray for Peter and Peter fails and yet he is restored because of Christ. And then we see Jesus, he prays for us and we have hope. We live based upon his prayers for us right now. And it's in that that you and I, we are able to strengthen each other. We don't strengthen each other because of our intellect, because of our uh, our charismatic personality. We strengthen one another. We, we strengthen each other in the faith. Not when we say, hey, you must be more faithful. That, that will come. But when we say, you, you and I, we, we, we trust in Christ. We cling to Christ. We have faith. And when you stand in faith, it strengthens me. And when I stand in faith, it strengthens you. And when we stand in faith together, the church grows strong. It's a faith in Christ, crucified, risen, victorious, one day will return, and right now is praying for us. Our ancient way for our modern day today, simply put, it's to rely on Christ and to trust in his prayer. Trust in his care for you right now. Trust that no matter no matter how hard life is. No matter how often you find that you are falling on your faith face and you are turning in faith again and you're saying, God, I've messed up again. Lord, please help. He welcomes you, not by your goodness, but because of his faithfulness. And he is praying for you right now. Amen.